I'm here to talk about success. Right? Another thing that, by the way, is the first rule of success. The first rule of success is to have a vision. You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go, and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world, if the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it would just drift around. It would not end up anywhere, most likely in the wrong place. So I was very fortunate that I stumbled onto my vision. I mean, as you know, I was born in 1947 in Austria after the Second World War. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker at a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. My father wanted me to become a police officer like he was. My mother wanted me just to stay there and marry a girl and to have a bunch of kids. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. So I was searching. Then one day I went to school, I remember I was 11 years old, and they showed a documentary about America. And off this time, this episode, that's where I want to be. Now I don't want to be around here in the little farmhouses and these little buildings. Everything's old. I want to be in America. But now the question was just how they get to America. In those days it was a very expensive trip, it's not like today. So we again very fortunate, I was very fortunate that one day after school I walked by my school in Graz. And it was the only school that really saw what kind of American stuff. So I went inside and looked around and looked at the stuff kind of like a bodybuilding magazine that had French Park on the cover. French Park was then a three time Mr. Universe. And I saw it on the big screen as you can see. And on the cover it said, How French Park, Mr. Universe, became a European star. So I looked at the cover and I said, I got to get this magazine. So I bought the magazine. And I read it over and over the front page of the back. And everything in there, how he trained, how he was working out in Leeds, India, in the back of the town, how he brought up everything for three, four hours and became the strongest man of Europe, and how he won Mr. Europe, Mr. Great Britain, and eventually Mr. Universe. And how he won the second Mr. Universe and the third Mr. Universe, and how he was discovered. Starring the war in Europeans. I read that and I said to myself, wow, this is the blueprint of my life. This is exactly what I want to do. I want to become a bodybuilding champion just like Rich Park. I want to get into movies just like Rich Park. And I want to make millions of dollars to be rich and famous just like Rich Park. You know how great it felt? that I knew where I was going. Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going. So it was just a question of how to do it. I was so relieved. Because when you have a goal, when you have a vision, everything becomes easy. So I knew where to go. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard? Five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And the door people all the time, they said, because to me, I'm shooting for more. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal, this vision, turn into reality. With the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a board. And this is no different than anything else, what I'm talking about. This is not just about bodybuilding. It was the same in acting. And the same thing is also in politics. I remember that in politics, I had a very clear vision.
that I will be the leader of California. This is as far as I could go because I was not one in America so I could not run for president. So being the governor of the fifth largest state was to me really the ultimate title, the ultimate accomplishment in politics. So even though people give up and say, why don't you go and run for something smaller, you're never going to make it. That's because we have, we feel the same thing at the time. We have 24 hours a day. We sleep six hours a day. So that gives you still 18 hours. And there's someone shaking their head out there trying to say probably, I don't sleep six hours, I sleep eight hours, right? But just sleep faster. So we have 18 hours a day. The average person works around eight to 10 hours. So let's assume it's 10 hours, so you have eight hours left. Then you travel around an hour a day, maybe two hours a day. So now you have still six hours left. What do you do with six hours? Then you eat a little bit, then you schmooze a little bit, talk a little bit to people and all that stuff. But you can see how much time there is available if you organize your day. So you got to work hard. I mean, let me tell you something, when I went to America, I went to college, I went and worked out five hours a day, and I was working on construction. Because in those days in bodybuilding, there was no money. We didn't, I didn't have the money for food supplements or anything. So I had to go to work. So I worked on construction. I went to college, I worked out in the gym and at night from 8 o'clock at night to 12 midnight, I went to acting class four times a week. So I did all that. There was not one single minute that I wasted. I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. I remember that there was a sports writer that was there in the gym and he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. That is when he starts counting. That is working hard. And so you can't get around the hard work, it doesn't matter who it is. Well, I hate plan B. <laughs> but when you start doubting yourself, that is very dangerous. Now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. It is very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net, I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I said I made a full commitment that I'm going to go be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm going to be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm going to get in the show business and I'm going to be a leading man. No matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something, don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb the ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. Michael Jordan said in one of his interviews, and they say, you're unbelievable, we're the greatest basketball player of all times. I mean, tell me about that. And they say, well, you're just mentioning the successes. But it says, for me to become the greatest basketball player, I missed 9,000 shots. 
when I was playing basketball in the NBA games. Does it make him a failure? No. He is one of the greatest basketball players of all times, but he failed 9,000 times. Do you get it? We all fail. It's okay. What is not okay is that when you fail, you stay down. Whoever stays down is a loser. And winners will fail and get up. Fail and get up. Fail and get up. You always get up. That is a winner. That is a winner. This is one of my six rules to success. You can only feel complete as a person if you think about what can you do for your fellow member around you that maybe needs help. I, I was an immigrant to America and I saw how America was the most generous country in the world. I mean, they opened up their arms to me, they helped me, they invited me for Thanksgiving dinner, the people, they brought me, uh, the bodybuilders in the gym brought me plates to my apartment because I had no plates, I had no silverware, I had no bedware, I had no pillows, I had no blanket, I had no TV, I had no radio, I had nothing. They brought it to my apartment. And they said to myself as an immigrant that is being embraced with open arms that I need to go and make sure that I give something back. And this is when I started feeling obligated. They said to myself, so what can I do? What can I do? But then I realized when there's so special Olympics that I can help and train special Olympians. And so we started getting involved in Special Olympics and in no time I proposed to them to start powerlifting in Special Olympics. And it became the number one sports in Special Olympics powerlifting. They always have a packed hall of 5,000 people. And I became the national trainer and the international trainer of Special Olympics. And I tell you, I felt so good. I felt better than winning a bodybuilding competition, going to one of their competitions and seeing a hundred of those athletes from all over the world competing in powerlifting and being happy and being included in being felt that they're equal to all of us. It was the most unbelievable feeling and this is why I got so excited about it that then after that, that's why my idea came about about after school programs because after school when I would go to schools to train students, I saw there was a gathering of students after the school was over outside the school. And I asked the school principal, what are all the students doing? And he said to me, I already got the idea to start an after school program. Sports and fitness programs and arts programs, music and painting and so on. And it became a huge success. I say all the money that I made is because of America. My success is because of America. Everything that I've accomplished is because of America. So for me now to give something back for seven years and not to make money makes no difference to me. I said, I'm going to do it. And I jumped in the end of the race and did it. And let me tell you something. I'm not poor because for seven years I didn't get paid. I'm perfectly fine. And it made me feel good that I could do that. Give back to America. Well, I think that every day we are benefiting from someone helping us. That's why I said earlier, there's no such thing as a self-made man. I mean, you think about it, you're born and you need your parents to raise you. You need your teachers to teach you. You need your coaches to do sports. And so when I think about back of the people that helped me, I remember that everything I did always needed help. Think about it when someone says, Aaron is the greatest self-made man. I said, you can call me anything you want, but don't ever call me self-made man. I said, because I did not get to the point by myself. I mean, think about just to be successful in the movies. The only one that makes you successful in the movies is the people that go to see the movie. So how can you say to yourself, my man, when you need millions and millions and millions of people all over the world to go and see a movie? So people that the press looks at and says, this guy has a big 
marks of the success. It's the people. It's you. Imagine if Jürgen and I don't think that we're self-made people and this hall right now is empty. No one here. Do you think this will be a successful conference? No. Who makes it successful? It's not him and me. We are just one little molecule that is added to the equation. But you are the ones that make this conference a successful conference. So thank you all of you for being here today. You are the ones that is making it big.